Hello everyone, my name is Robin J. Hoprin. Some of you may know me, others not. I am a voice actor, writer and graphic artist. But this isn't about me. This is about my good friend Zane Alexander Van Wyck. I learned that he passed away unbeknownst to me or anyone who worked with him. I was torn up. Admittedly, uh, bleh, admittedly, I still am. He was a great friend to work with. We'd known each other for six years. I first met him when he was d completing, well, on his second year of his bachelor's degree in film production, learning to be a composer at the time, and that's how me and him also came to work together. Zane was the main driving force of my projects. All the music that was done was composed by him, and... <laughs> It was amazing. The sounds that he used, the original style that he incorporated into all of his work. He was a good friend to all who knew him. He was working on so many projects himself, but he would always help others. Thank you for listening. I know this has been difficult, probably for me especially, but for you to listen to this and listen to me go on so many tangents, so many pauses, but... That's what that's what grief is like sometimes. You just can't find the right words. To Zane, if you're up there right now, I hope you're parting that TARDIS, buddy. And welcome to the final episode of Doctor Who, the community show, series one. Don't get, yeah, yeah, did you get scared there? You thought it was ending? No, don't worry, I'll be back next year for a brand new series. Kicking off, thank you. You're going to hear those words a lot this episode, because this episode is a special one. Instead of promoting people and projects, it's more just promoting the very kind people I've gotten to know over the last six months. Whether they be interview guests or just general helping hands, they're gonna get shouted out. Speaking of, this episode's guest is three guests. What? <laughs> they are three special, special guests because they are community show alumnists. It is Bo who makes the merch. It is Jerry who made the community show logo. And it is Harry Hudson Music who made the theme tune. And I mean, straight off the bat, a big thank you to all three of you. But you'll have to wait for the interview, and trust me, it's a really good one. I've gotten to know these three in particular very, very well, which made the interview all the funner. Other than that, it's the last show before Christmas, so... You know what I need to do. A very happy Christmas to all of you at home. Mm, I got conjunctivitis. Hartnell knows what's up. Yeah, that's right. But without further ado, let's start this episode off. Episode 13! Flux! Is that still happening by the time this goes out? At this point... I've been turned into a weeping angel, which honestly, rude. I have a few fan filmy type people. Some names you'll know, some names you might not. Let's find out, make it a little game. First off is Dalek Seth, who created The Emperor of the Daleks, the animated fan film, and ah, oh, so good. I featured a few episodes ago the sort of animation test as well as the trailer for Emperor of the Daleks. I was very excited. And wouldn't you know it, a few days later, in my emails, I found a correspondence from him asking if I wanted to feature as a couple of Daleks. And yes, of course I said yes. <laughs> if you've watched it already and you didn't know I was in it, I'm the special weapons Dalek as well as a Dalek scientist towards the beginning. Negative! Davros is a genius! All aliens will be purged! Davros will be purged! Obliterate! <laughs> And it was a pleasure to be involved. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. And as a whole, the fan film's amazing. It features the likes of Alia and Batman March and stuff. It's great. I can't not sing its praises. <laughs> Next is my first in-person interview. Not the first planned, but the first one to come out. DW 2012. Dom... Luke and Meg were so kind in letting me come all the way up to Birmingham to interview them in their TARDIS. What a day. <laughs> it was a very full-on day. I was pretty much out the whole time. Uh, it was a very long travel there and back. Four hours each go. Uh, just thinking about that train drives me botly. But 
worth it. Seeing that TARDIS, playing in that TARDIS, getting to film with them uh, as a little cameo in their uh, Series 5, it's incredible. It all came about because I asked Dom about the potential of an interview, and not an in-person one, like a, just a Zoom one, possibly even just with Dom. And Dominic was like, oh, by the way, we're filming at the moment, we're filming Series 5, and we might have a spot open for you. Do you want to come down, do it in person, and when we can film your cameo? And I said, yes, please. So we did. This is a test. There is Dom. Hello. There is Megan. Hello. There is Luke. He's not here. No, he doesn't exist anymore. He's out of continuity. But yeah, thank you to all three of you. It was incredible fun. And I hope we get to do it all again soon. Any excuse to get in that TARDIS. <laughs> also, the stuff they have hiding in the shed next to the TARDIS. Oh, the things I could spoil. Next is Chris McKeon, who you'll know from the Brigadier Project, the one with the deep fakes. He got in contact with me about it, and it was very interesting, very new. And I thought it was very interesting. And he asked for a very special request of doing his own video for it. And I said yes, just because it was, you know, it was different. It was new. I wanted to help him out as much as I can. And he was very nice, which is good. We had a very long, very laggy uh, Zoom call about the project beforehand, just to make sure it's all good and all dandy. And yeah, I didn't understand most of what he said because it was pretty much, so we're going to do... Brigadier. Yeah, I don't think I ever told you that, Chris. <laughs> but yes, thank you to Chris, and I do wish you all the luck with your Brigadier project. Let's bring the Brigadier back to the wedding of Sir Jane Smith and to Doctor Who. In my unit days, we were like a family. Last but not least is another interview guest, Daniel J. Patton. It's always nice to have another DW2012 Doctor under my belt. He was an absolute delight to talk to, and... I hope to meet him in person one day, that'd be excellent. And I of course wish you all the luck with your fan film that will hopefully be coming out next year, I believe. Looks dope. Hell, I think that's the whole reason I asked you then. I mean, you were already on my list, of course, but, you know, with the trailer that just came out, it only made sense. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, sorry, there's a bit of a flare going on. I'm trying to do some nice cinematic lighting, but I didn't account for the webcam. <laughs> it looks like there's a person just like, of, of a man of light has entered your room and is just staring oh. me out. I, I, I don't mind, Bernard. Still can't get over your camera, though. And Luke's. You both have the same camera. Insane. Moving swiftly on. And now, bloopers from the Sarah Jane Adventures skit. Have you been telling people I'm dead? Go. No, I have to look into the camera. Right okay. She's here! Yes. She's here! It's for the third episode in. Oh, piss. What? <laughs> Doing some ridiculous running. Hello. <laughs> <We're> running. <laughs> Body. Oh. People. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, was it? I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Basically, anyone who is a voice actor or makes music is going to go here. So, starting off, the obvious choice, the one who you'll be hearing from later on, Hudson Music, aka Harry. Don't know how many times I'm going to sing his praises, but I'm going to keep doing it because it's it's still warranted. <laughs> he is the creator of the community show theme tune, the one you hear at the beginning of every episode and in between all the little sections. It slaps, and it's all because of Harry. I didn't give him much direction, I don't think. I just said it needed to be fun <laughs> and sort of upbeat, and yeah, he nailed it. I don't think I ever want to change it. And you can commission him if you want your own theme tune or soundtrack for your audio production or fan film or whatever, you can commission him, so link down below for that, as well as everyone I will talk about today. But yeah, thank you, Harry. Loved you for like 11 years now, since the Minecraft days. Hell yeah. Next is Spectral Horizons, the fan audio group, and yeah, just littered with amazing people. There was, of course, the four amazing people I interviewed, including Taya, who is the one I've spoken to the most, and just generally nice people. They were kind enough to let me come in and be their sort of resident tenant uh, for such stuff as dreams, as well as a future project. Amazing people, lovely, talented people. And thank you for being my second, well, technically third, if you count the pilot. Uh, thank you for coming on as a guest in the early days. Next is Alia E. Torrey. 
getting sick of that name yet in the community show? Hope not, because it's certainly not going to be the last time you hear her name. I've probably mentioned her every episode now and i'm not even mentioning her for her amazing back catalogue of of uh voices i mean she hell she was my first skit collaborator fun fact for the adventure game skit which is still probably my favorite so he's probably dead why do i feel a bit poorly all of a sudden But it's more what she's done outside of the community show. Just going back and forth with her is incredibly fun. And she's given me so many different little sort of tidbits, tips about voice acting in the industry. It's been very helpful. And the way she gets her family around the telly to watch the community show every episode just brings, brings a warm, fuzzy feeling to the old heart. And of course, she came on for an interview. That was awesome. Everything's gonna skew it. Hang on a second, I'm trying to work this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the technical difficulties, so I'm sure this will all go swimmingly. I'm sure, I'm sure. Again, she was on the list for ages, considering how many times her name popped up. Glad to get that done. Hopefully we can do it in person at some point. That'd be awesome. I'll, I'll head on up to Scotland. Why not? But yes, thank you, Alia, for your help and being an awesome person in the community. Oh, hell yeah. Next is a bit of a weird one. Siobhan of the Flashing Blade podcast. Why am I mentioning her here? Well, she's the first person that I'm aware of who independently of their own volition, shouted out the community show and promoted it. It was awesome to hear that little shout out on your podcast. It, it, it just made me very happy, even though you said I had nervous energy, which no, I don't, stop it. Next is some other names you'll be familiar with, Joe and Luke. Luke you'll know for his Dalek voices. Joe you'll probably know from Venus on the uh, Whovian's Choice Awards as well. They've both just become some great friends of mine. I knew them pre-community show uh, for Venus, but just getting to know them over the last few months, having them both on independently as guests for the community show. Sorry, I just backhanded my Christmas tree. <laughs> It's okay, I only got the brush. I didn't get adipose. But they've also both been incredibly helpful. For example, Joe helping me with, with the Whovian's Choice Awards and Luke helping me with different voice acting stuff. Like I said, they've both become brilliant friends of mine and I wish you all the luck with future endeavours and I'm still patiently awaiting Venus Flint Episode 2 and any future appearances of the 11th Doctor in that. Come on now, I'm waiting in the wings. Oh, I can't edit. Yeah, in picture. Oh, you're not in the picture. I just oh. like, <laughs> It's only going right through like the little. I can't see it's blurred out. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going. We're just gonna take off the blur. Oh, uh, you trying to hide stuff there. in the background? It's, what you hiding? I'm trying to hide my messy. <laughs> Next is another familiar name, Abby or Abby of Traken. I've mentioned her. Again, countless times. Whether it be for her audios with TT Hoovians or her cosplay. She does it all! <laughs> and again, just became a really good friend of mine. In fact, when I went up to uh, visit Katie Haynes in London, well, I say up, it was more that way. <laughs> Directions, you know, I don't have a compass. I didn't want to look stupid on a train, even though granted tenant suit is probably one of the most cash you could do. I asked her if she wanted to head along with me as she had already met Katie and, you know, It'd be pretty fun, no doubt. She was kind enough to say yes, and we headed up and visited Katie Haynes and had a grand old time. We did. Rustling in bag ASMR. Oh, I can't find my purse. What's there? Oh, Gemma. Never mind. Gemma. Okay. But yes, Abby is a damn talent and a very nice person to boot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing this episode. It started out with really good intentions, but I didn't really think it through. Like, what am I shouting out? They're not making anything currently. Just shouting out them being nice, I guess. Finally, in the audio section is another podcaster. Josh. Josh Carr. Who knew podcast? Hell yeah. I said a couple of times jokingly that I'd love to be on the podcast, knowing full well that I wouldn't be, because why would I? But then he asked me on the podcast, and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Yay. I've got a man, a myth and a legend with me today. It's the charisma canon himself. It is the host of the community show. It is the one and only Jack Reeves. Oh, the, the charisma canon, that's a new one. Oh, I'm keeping that. <laughs> it was very kind of him to have me on. It was a whale of a time. I will have you on for series two as a guest. No doubt, because I know where you live now. I know where you live, and I'll come and find you. Couldn't have made that creepier if I tried. <gasps> oh, could I? Anyway, you're awesome, Josh. Much love to you. Next section, please.
And now, day of the doctor skip bloopers. James Sutton's funny. So I close the portal and you go, well, uh, Moffat, anything you've got to well, say? Well, anything you've got to say? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's fair enough, I suppose. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> It's a hedgehog! I'm a doctor. I'm 904 years old. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a <laughs> storm, the bringer of darkness, and you are basically just a hedgehog, aren't you? Just, yeah, just keep on doing that. Yeah, but you stink! Oh. I prefer William Arnold! Hip, hip, hip. Hello. Is this the orientation you know, in the episode? You know, it's it's not, but we'll swap after this line. <laughs> ah, a bit of foreplay, darling. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll try and stick the tip in. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Matthew Smith. Why am I doing Matt Smith? I don't Hello. know. I'm the Doctor. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Doctor too. Don't attend, I suppose. Oh, yes. Well, 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 I don't know anything about, you know, Instagram and stuff. And even I know what a selfie is. Well, <laughs> fuck you. You want to know how I'm seeing two different ages at once? Well, you said I want to know how I got these scars. <laughs> <laughs> My father was a drinker. He a fiend. A fiend. One night he goes off crazy than usual. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually well, do that with a yeah. purple coat and everything. There you can we do go. that. The Eleventh Doctor is the Joker. Already done it. <laughs> Have you? Oh yes. Is that already a sketch? Twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> 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 so I could not do that with a straight face. I want to know how I could be both an eighteen-year-old. <laughs> <Can't sing now>. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. <laughs> Oh, you want to do it right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, no, I'm just hold me. <laughs> <laughs> Snogging Arthur Darville. Did you do that? Oh yes. Oh, very lucky. Oh, I know. Good kissing. Um, I give him a solid eight. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Paul McGann. Paul McGann. When he's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Getting lucky with no one just walking through. It's oh, a no. it's a midday of a Saturday. Stop trying to steal a hedgehog, Gemma. Gemma, no, please. Gemma has adopted a hedgehog. Well, adopted is a strong word. She's going to kidnap the hedgehog. It's all there, I don't see it's it. It's a mascot. It's oh, it's moved there. along. That's a Zygon. You're giving her a baby. Am Just, I? Sorry, I'm <laughs> a deep conversation. I know you do, darling. Oh, Jack. I'm expecting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had wondered, darling. Yeah, I am getting a bit on. <laughs> I'm probably having this suit as well. It is tight. Look at the arms. Look at the... <laughs> <laughs> look, how, yeah. look how tall I've gotten since. Look how I big you've this. grown. And the, and the trousers are going. I mean, it's not too bad on the trousers, though. No, they should go. They should. They, they should oh. go here. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've got a pug back home. That's true. And a dog that wants to murder me. Yeah, but we should have brought the pug much. with us. Yeah, that could have been the Zygon. We could have taken the pug out. Oh, it was the pug. <laughs> You're disgusting, Moffat. <laughs> You're a, you're a dog! <laughs> Can't believe you've done this! <laughs> oh look, you can see the microphone, that's weird. <laughs> artists! I've gotten to know some lovely artists and here is some I'd like to share with you. Firstly, Jerry, creator of the community show logo. It's awesome. I didn't ask him to do it, he just did it out of the kindness of his heart. Thank you, Jerry. I would talk more about you, but you're going to be in the interview, so you can do it yourself. Don't be lazy. Speaking of, people who are going to be in the interview, Bo as well. An incredible artist. I actually commissioned her for a personal piece of me and Gemma. Wasn't it great, Gemma? I loved it. Gemma loved it, and she didn't even swear that time. Christmas one. She wants a Christmas one. She's so needy, isn't she? <laughs> but Bo, you are so lovely to do both the melon design for episode 6 and the pumpkin design for episode 10. No doubt we'll be doing some more collaborations in the near future. Next is Docker Chapman, who has just been awesome, really. <laughs> we haven't worked together yet, but he's been sending me so many different cosplayers and artists of his own volition that he thinks should be in the community show, which has been very helpful for me because I can't always find everyone. And just seems like an all-round awesome dude. Promoting people in the community is sort of my thing, so seeing other people do it makes me happy. So, good on you, Docker. Hope to meet you someday. Next is interview guest Connor J. Atkins. What a talent. What more needs to be said about his work? 
Like, dude. <laughs> he was great fun to talk to. He's another guy who's excellent for a story. Like, he has met some great people, some great actors from the show, and has some fantastic stories to tell about them, my favourite being the Colin Baker stuff. <laughs> if you want to hear more about that, go to last episode's interview, because I had him on, as I said. So good! Hope to meet you again at a future Phantom Films event, by the way. Finally, in the art section, there is Andy Drews! And you are here purely because you made that Battles in Time card. I commissioned you for like three pound, and you made a little Battles in Time card of me, and it makes me happy. That's all you gotta do to be featured on here, just make me happy. It's a fairly low bar. Thank you to those lot, and moving swiftly on. Oh, that's weird, you can see my hand. Ho oh. <laughs> And now, bloopers from Doctor Who. What if... Two. I'm not proud of that. Oh, all right. It's me, Tana. <laughs> James Sutton, you've got me addicted to that meme. Because at this point, Adelaide knew she had to kill herself to make a point. I'm all so crazy. I ain't missy. I'm no Ali at all. Captain Adelaide Brooke, archaeologist. <laughs> oh, don't. You're not archaeologist. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Beavers. Not my best cosplay. <laughs> Tenant warm up. Oh, the look. The look in his eyes is so evil. I love it. I love it. Little people! <laughs> this is wrong, Doctor. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Care. As long as I get that bit, I, I, I've nailed it. <laughs> don't look at me like that. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. Hi, welcome to the Ood Sphere Comedy Club. Yay! Wow, the tough crowd, huh? Uh, so what do you get when you cross a, a, a zebra with a crossing? A zebra crossing! Laugh! Hi, I'm Cam Jack Harkness. Play, Cos. Hold on, I meant cosplay. Comedy genius you've all come to expect. But what cosplayers do I have to mention well? Let's find out. <laughs> Firstly is Katie Haynes, one of my interview guests, and one that I've been lucky enough to meet, even though she's over in America. She happened to come over to London, and we hung out for a good few hours in London. What a day! How do I describe Katie Haynes? Katie sent me a, a video of Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, okay. How do I best describe Katie Haynes to someone who hasn't met her before? A, a cartoon character come to life is how I would describe Katie. In the best possible way, though, she was a delight. As was her now fiancé, Michael. So, congratulations to the pair of you for getting married. Uh, every time I see, I, I show Gemma someone who's gotten engaged, she, she always just gives me a glare. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to bleep that, but yeah. Congratulations to Katie and Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but you two were amazing and also introduced me to the Who Shop properly. Oh my god, go to the Who Shop! We'll say to that later, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. But yes, amazing cosplayer as well, Katie Haynes, Jack Reel's seal of approval. <laughs> Next is TARDIS Man. AKA Aiden. He's a terrific 11th Doctor cosplayer as well as an amazing TARDIS CG boy. A AKA his nickname of TARDIS Man. He has been on my list of interview guests for ages, but I'd love to do that in person because he's a cosplayer, which just makes sense. Get my grubby little fingers all over that Matt Smith shirt, you know, the blue or the red one from Series 5. I love that one. But I've, ne I've never been able to get anyway. I will always remember him with this p uh, picture he did where he. <laughs> it was a shot from Doctor Who Road and he just put the Capaldi TARDIS behind me. It's so good, and he did. I didn't pay for it. Thank you, Aiden. You lovely boy. Series two. We'll find a. We'll find a way to to meet up. Maybe a con or something. Next is a double whammy. Dom and Gretchen Sows. I won't go too much into Dom because I'll be mentioning him again in a hot minute. <laughs> but why am I mentioning these two together? Well, you uncultured swine! It's because they both appeared in the Sarah Jane Adventures. 
parody intro is a damn good video. I mean, of course it is. I made it, so. It was very kind of them to lend their faces and their voices uh, to this little random video. Much like most of my skits, I was going to do it all myself, but I thought, I know a Sarah Jane cosplayer. I know Dom. <laughs> Why not ask them? And they wanted to, and they said yes, and they did it very short notice. Awesome. So Gretchen in particular, you make your own costumes, right? You, for the most part, you like sew it or you, you have source like the originals. Dude, I need to interview you, in fact, because I'd love to know which of your cosplays is sewn and which of yours is bought, because I really can't tell the difference. Next, another interview guest of James Sutton. I have known you for years, ever since the Minecraft DWO days, much like Harry, in fact, but I think I met you after. It was so nice to finally meet you and talk to you. Me and Gemma both had a terrific time. And, oh, getting in that, Dalek. <laughs> stop, stop. And actually getting to roam around as opposed to being on the grass, which was great fun with the Dobsons, of course, but getting to actually walk, move around and crash into Gemma's car. <laughs> Getting to wear your tenant suit. Dude. Now we spoke we we've spoken about this, Mr. Sun. But when are, when are you gonna get a new Magnoli Tether Doctor suit so uh I can I can get I can get that. Please, please James. I still am not over how, how sexy I looked. <laughs> it was so cool to be in a screen accurate tenth doctor suit. You'd think with me being me and the face and the voice that I would that would have been the first thing I'd ever bought. No, I've never had one and getting to wear one for the first time I was like, well damn it now I don't want to take it off. Anyway, <laughs> that whole day with you James going to film that skit as well as going to McDonald's <laughs> It was great fun doing that in cosplay was weird though yeah. Me and Gemma also just had a generally nice time up there. We had another day. Uh, we booked hotel. We just sort of went sightseeing on our own. It was nice. We went punting, didn't we, Jim? Yeah, it was expensive. It was expensive, Sorry, but it, it, was it was nice though, wasn't it? It was really good. I enjoyed it. It was a lovely place. Our tour guide was very funny as well. I was expecting to hate him, but he was very nice. Oh no, I loved him. He just made jokes the whole time. I do have to tone it down a bit now, because much like last episode, I uh, am shouting out Matty Moore. Like I said last time, it's not a cosplayer I knew, or, uh, which is a damn shame. And he unfortunately passed away. And it's tragic. It's horrible. Uh, going through his Twitter feed after the fact... It's, it, I do not recommend it. By all accounts, he was an absolutely lovely individual and it's a shame I never got to meet him or see him. So yeah, shout out to Matty Moore. Now, how do I get out of this sad hole I've dug for myself? By moving swiftly on. And now, bloopers from the Nightmare Before Christmas parody. Can you call it a parody? I didn't really change the words. Um, this is probably the first since uh, the Spectral Horizons that I've had more than just one person, so this is going to be chaos. Especially because of Mr. Hudson down there, who I've known for a long, long time. <laughs> we'll introduce ourselves. So, Bo, why don't you start us off? Hi, my name is Bo. You've probably seen me and heard of me before, because like in every episode, it's like, ah, yes, here's a shirt made by me. That's me! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Jerry, you're up next. Well, I guess most people would know my work from Doctor Who Poop, which I, I write and design for. I've also done a bit of work for the community show in the past with, with the designs. I don't know, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> you made the community show logo, among other a couple other bits for me, so it's very nice of you. Mm. And go on Hudson Music. I'm known as Hudson Music, and that's my official name, my birth certificate. I don't know why I was like that, they just called me Hudson Music. <laughs> I thought, all right then. Um, I make music. I made the theme tune for the community show. 
Um, and I suppose that's that's as far as I as I am. As far as you are. Uh, I suppose, yeah, I mean, I can mention my age and where I live, but I don't know if that's too Yeah, too yeah, yeah. Uh, address, <laughs> I need to write this down. I need your address, I need your social security number. Name of your favourite pet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As the audience can guess the theme, it is sort of this episode is a whole thank you as a, as a whole for the community show, which is only a few months old, but with the help of you three in particular, it has grown, you know, from you lot, I've gotten the logo, which is absolutely magnificent, Jerry. The colours are, mwah. Bo, you're, you were the first guest ever on. You were in the pilot and you've done some amazing designs for the store. And of course, Hudson Music, you made the theme tune, which slaps. So just okay. first of all, a huge thank you to all three of you. It, brilliant contributions all around. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Anytime, well, lovely. Also- and only one <laughs> of these three people got paid. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, I'm off, right? Well, well I've got uh, three questions for each of you. We'll sort of go around in a circle. So, Mister, it's weird calling you Hudson. I'm just going to say it now. I've known you for years and just call, having to stifle your name. If it helps, I do say my name to people who commissioned me. So I might as well say my name here, oh, which good. is Harry. But like I said, I've known you for the longest time, but music and making music is something sort of relatively new. So what, what got you into making the music? Well, Oh, that's a very good question. Um, it's just been so sick to make your own um, soundtrack and stuff to work or whatever, instead of keep having to take copyrighted stuff. So that was the first thing. And then there's a lot of music in classic that I sit there and think, oh, you know, if they, they turn all that synth into orchestra, I'd be like, mm! instead of waiting on people to, to do that for me, I thought, well, I'll have a, I'll have a stab at that. And it's kind of paid off. I mean, it's worked to my benefit. You've done some amazing theme tune remixes. You've done some amazing uh, commissions for uh, people like Rassilon Productions. The, the work you've done is terrific, my boy. Thank you, lovely. I feel like a proud father. Oh, you should well done, do. <laughs> Moving on to you, Jerry. So obviously, as you said, people probably know you most from Doctor Who Poop. So not necessarily for making artwork and logos and such. But my real question is, I don't remember asking you to make that logo. Why did you make it? What's your plan, boy? <laughs> Why did you bother? <laughs> I liked what you were doing, and I I saw that I remember the logo that was the before, and it was very white. It sort of blends into YouTube's background, so it sort of looked like you didn't have one. <laughs> That's fair. So it's fair. I was like. I'll just spend half an hour making something, and I ended up with that. And I said it over, and you were like, I, I'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was a bit more excited, but no, like, it's it's magnificent, and it's one of those things that uh, the community show helps to promote, is that it just promotes the kindness of others, and just doing that, apropos of nothing, just because you liked the idea, is exactly what I like. So, again, I'm just going to keep saying thank you to all three of you throughout the whole thing. <laughs> Bo, on to you. My question is, as I said, you are the first guest, You are, and in fact, you are now the first guest to come back on the show, unless you count Dominic for the live thing, but w- what did you think when, out of the blue, this random dude who, as far as you're aware, didn't have the community show, just messaged you saying, can I have a, can I hop on a Zoom with you? Just chat, chat away for <laughs> half an hour. I mean, it was it was really fun because before I, I just sketch a lot because yeah, I like art and I like doing art. And then it got picked, like, picked up by Doctor Who and said it on like the um, Fan Art Friday stuff. So, oh my God, what's happening? And then you messaged and I was looking through your work and I was like, oh my God, this is also so cool. It's like, yes. Let's totally go. I just so much fun. <laughs> Having that first interview locked was very important. Yeah. That then opens the door to other people being like, "Oh, so this can happen. He's not just some alone creep." So we're rolling back round to to Mr. Harry. Uh, my question to you: Do you do you still go on DWO? Doctor Who Online, the Minecraft server. You still go on there? I don't think I've been on there for at least a year. Just because I, I don't think I've been picked up Minecraft for ages, you know. Mainly because of uni and then also the music stuff. So, no, I hope it's doing well because I miss the sandbox and making really crap sets. A fun yes. story. This Me and Harry met on this Minecraft server about, I don't know, 11 years ago at this point. And you were trying to make your series. 
and you were getting really annoyed at everyone because they were just children. <laughs> we were all children. Uh, do you have, as an add-on, do you have, do you remember any funny stories from that time? I'll be honest with you, if I did, uh, I'd be cringing right now. So I'd probably lift it all out the window. I have this great memory of, um, uh, I think, I forget who it was, but he was supposed to be a Silurian, and he had a bow, and ev every time you were trying to film, he would just start shooting everyone. <laughs> That's exactly what I remember. Yeah. And we were filming this was for like some pre reason. Skype, pre Discord. <laughs> yeah. All you could use was a bloody chat in, the, uh, in Minecraft. Um, yeah. And we were filming on some. Um, wasn't it the the American diner from uh, Impossible Astronaut? That's the set. And for yeah. some reason, that was like, there was there for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Have to remake them all. Yes. <laughs> HD <Yeah>. remaster. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, hello. Uh, when's the next Doctor Who po No, I'm kidding. But, um... Don't ask him that, ask him that now! My real question is, you have most recently, in the last couple of months, been noticed so much by the likes of John Bishop for Evil Dan and Screen Rant, which was the weirdest one. Uh, how does... How, what was your reaction seeing stuff like that? It's interesting with when, a, when an actor retweets something, because you do have a little look beforehand and go, okay, he's... He's actually active on Twitter. You know, this person's manager just writes for them. If you really want to, you can sort of focus certain memes towards them. That definitely wasn't the, the, the aim for Evil Dan because it just ended up that way. <laughs> the Screen Rant article was so funny to me because there was just all these genuine articles and in the center of it it was just like to poop. <laughs> every segment of it was like and this meme changed the community forever <laughs> it, just, it made me laugh it was brilliant it just sort of shows the doctor who poops reach that it's gone from weird memes which it still is to like weird memes that are being noticed by people from the show so Bo, back to Bo. hello Bo. how would you rate our portal to uh Operation skills. I guess kind of good. My brain just stops working after like an hour. It's like, ah, yes, I don't get what the physics are in those like kind of games, but I, I like it, but I'm just very dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very niche question because probably no one knows about this, but me and Bo yeah. played Portal 2 not too long ago <laughs> in the co-op mode and it was a weird old time. I kind of wish I recorded it because it was yeah. really funny. <laughs> Just so much confusion. I, I remember this level, we were like at least like half an hour like, what? How do we do this? What's happening? What does this button do? I just go backwards? Like, ah. And then yes. if in doubt, I just walked into the poisonous water. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's very funny you mentioned Portal 2 because that reminds me of back in the day when we played Portal 2 and I was just yeah. the most unhelpful person in the whole game. You were so <laughs> annoying. You were the worst, Harry. Bo was helping. You suck. Just chucking the bricks everywhere. I was trying to help. That's a different. That, there's a difference in there. <laughs> yeah, but Harry, you didn't make a very sweet piece of art after we after we played. <laughs> Bo did make a very sweet piece of artwork to commemorate our play, our playthrough, which was very sweet. <laughs> Jerry, I need to play Portal Two with you at some point to complete the the, the trifecta. It seems. <laughs> Back to Harry. We're on our last questions. Uh, last question round. Uh, you do commissions, uh, as as mentioned. So where can people find you for commissions? You could first start off by finding my YouTube channel, which is weirdly named Hudson Music. I doubt that would have been said before this point, so big secret. And then uh, I would hope that I put the link to my website in the in the description. Click that, you'll find my website. Don't pull that face. <laughs> and then if, there should be a section called, uh, oh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's probably something like commission me or something like that. And then you send me an email. Tell me what you want, send like references for what sort of vibe you're going for, and then take it from there, I suppose. How many commissions have you done now? You've done a bunch. Yeah, every time I go, oh, the commissions are ending, something pops up out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, I did uh, one for Rastlon Productions. There's been a couple of other like sort of Doc 2 projects and a couple of theme tunes. Jerry, so I don't think you necessarily need promotion for Doctor Who Poop, but have you got any other future plans, future projects? Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't know how much I should. I should say necessarily. Say everything. Um, uh, every, every time. Uh, well, the shorts channel was released recently as a sort of test to see how other channels would do. For a while, whenever short content was released on the main channel, there was always comments like, 
release the big stuff. And it's like, oh, great. Well, give us a couple of years first. <laughs> we thought you were dead. So. <laughs> so, sure. And now it's sort of opened a few doors. After series 13 airs, we've got Dalek to finish, which hopefully should be finished by the end of the year. You heard it. If it does it, if it's not out at the end of the year, <laughs> no, no, don't do this. No, don't do this. this information. Uh. <laughs> because we we don't want to spend that much more time on it. Honestly, we're <laughs> sick to death of it. Screw Henry Van Staten. He's you can't make any words out of him. It's a strange thing. At the start of the episode, it says it's his birthday. Never brought up again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there's some exciting things coming down the line. We were all eagerly awaiting that Dalek one. Although, wasn't there that Cyberman one you were going to do? Yeah. What happened to that? It is a story. It was made by with somebody who uh, left Doctor Who People a while ago. And when they left, they said, we don't want it released. I was a bit confused by it. But, uh, it's oh. you know, don't want to create bad relations or anything. So we just... Mm. Not continuing it, sadly. A lot of it was completed. I uh, miss Mrs. Moore, man. That's all I want to see is Mrs. Moore. Mrs. Moore! And then finally, good old Bo. Same question as, uh, as Harry. If people want to commission you for some fabulous artwork, where would they look? Twitter is my my, my thing, I guess. I, like, every, everything I post is on there, all my artwork. So just go over there, approach me, at me. I, I probably, via Discord, it's also fine. Just... Yeah, a friendly hello, anything. She's good. <laughs> that's just how it that's that's just how it works. Thank you for coming on for this interview, the three of you, and thank you overall for your help with the community show. This has probably been one of the funniest interviews thus far, just because of how well I know you beforehand. Anytime. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> it's been lovely. <laughs> oh buddy boy, final section of the episode, I know. I know, it's sad every time. <laughs> there are a lot of people that I couldn't fit in the normal sections. Probably the busiest one. So we're going to go through all of them. Yes, because everyone deserves a little shout out and a thank you, most importantly. First of all is the MCM crew, my three fantastic guests from Comic-Con who were kind enough to say yes and come along for the live panel, which I honestly still can't believe I did. Flux. What do you think? Is oh, it yeah. a good word or not? Should it be in the dictionary? Is this? Um, Pretty sure it is. What? Yeah, it is. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. I'll have to buy a dictionary. Hmm. What is wrong with you? <laughs> a lot of things, Dom. <laughs> How did I get away with doing that? Seriously. But yes, thank you to Dominic. Thank you to Rory, aka Rassel on Productions. Again, another one I've got to get you on proper for the show. And thank you to Philip Hawkins. You all did a fantastic job as my live guests and fielded the questions very well. Had fun with the quiz. I hope you all still got those prizes, didn't give them away. Fingers crossed we can do it next year uh, with some different guests. I'm doubtful. <laughs> anyway, negative vibes, go away. Next person, Louise Widdit. Louise, I keep seeing you on Twitter. I'm a big fan of your style, specifically community show style. You're always tweeting about the show and buying that merch. It, it, it brings me so much joy seeing you and your lovely son wearing like the melon ones, for example, and just how enthusiastic you are as a viewer. It just, it brings me joy. I don't know if I've ever properly mentioned it on the show, but thank you. You're awesome. Yeah. Next is a name you probably don't know, Mr. Tardace. Uh, he does these live streams. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tardis, we know him, we love him. Trilby reviews, as he's often known. He doesn't wear the Trilby much anymore though, so false advertising. Anyway, he, d he does these live streams, as you probably know, and to promote the MCM panel, he let me come on, and it was great. So what, what was the instigator for you to start the community show? To go from Doctor Who Road, which you're still doing, but to make uh, one your primary focus to the other? What, what was the instigator? How did that come about? Uh, well, so I was walking through a forest one day, and I specifically remember that first message put in the live chat when I came on, which was essentially saying that it's nice to have a, a hot guest on. Hell yeah. <laughs> My ego's usually big, but that one... Ooh. Felt good. But yes, thank you, Mr. Tardis, and amazing congratulations are in order for how well the uh, charity livestream uh, did. I believe you can still donate to the 1963 livestream for the film and TV charity. 
Outstanding. I donated towards the end. I was going to come on for that, but I didn't have time because I was working. Ugh. But outstanding work. Amazing amount raised. Next is the fabulous and always nice Doctor Who Adventures. So much positive vibes from these guys. And they were kind enough to put little old me on their list of amazing creators. And the day that dropped was really funny. It had been teased the day before and some people were like, oh, it's got to be Jack. And I was like, no, it's not. Why would it be Jack? And then it was Jack. Wow and introduce something that would later play a very large role in the channel. Doctor Who Road, a comedy series based on Doctor Who's iconic characters, arrived in the very same year. Seeing like a sort of retrospective on my channel was weird, like going all the way back to the early days to now was really weird. It was a very kind video and I, I go back and watch it every once in a while just for the, again, the warm fuzzies. I'm all about them warm fuzzies. Oh, we're, look at these slippers, not wearing any socks because they're all in the wash. Fun fact. Anyway, talk to adventures. Cool days. <laughs> Gotta have you two on as guests at some point. That's, that's a must. That's a must. Next is Clayton or Commander Moose. Oh, I love Clayton. It was brilliant, even though the time zones were all weird. Time zones confuse me. But he is making the Doctor Who fan game, and it still looks so good. He was even kind enough to ask me to do a test voice for it. I don't know where that clip's gone. I might ask him for that. But he's an amazingly talented person, a very funny person, because that interview was great. Shame on you if you skipped that one. How dare you? But yes, Clayton, thank you for coming on the show. It was awesome to chat to you, and I still talk to you occasionally on Discord. You're a cool dude. I feel like I'm just saying the same thing for every category. I apologise. I do mean every word I say. I'm very sincere here. Everyone I'm mentioning are awesome. I love them. Next is another obvious one. The Dobsons. We love the Dobsons. Don't we love the Dobsons, Gemma? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love Rory. We all love Rory. It was amazing coming out and chatting to you guys. You were the first in-person interview I had booked. It just so happened that DW 2012 happened before. Getting to chat to all three of you, uh, even the one you didn't get to see, uh, Andy's lovely wife, uh, was terrific fun to chat to. And dude, getting in that Dalek. Excellent, yes. Make sure you've got your Dalek hat on. Oh, good idea. Exterminate. We're doing it. <laughs> Can I look after I'll pop it on my head, shall I? There we go. I mean, it wasn't the last time I got in a Dalek. Thank you, James Sutton, again. But doing that for the first time, I like I'm so glad I filmed it. Otherwise, oh, if you haven't seen it, the me getting inside that Dalek, it's a separate video. And the sheer delight <laughs> that it was. It was a nerd's dream. I got in a TARDIS with DW2012 and I got in a Dalek with them. What's next? <laughs> Time fracture, let me in. <laughs> Stop flooding. <laughs> but yes, thank you to the whole Dobson family, including the adorable Rory. It was a delight to chat to you and, well, as of recording this, not the last time I'll be seeing you. What? <laughs> Also, yeah, everyone tweet at Time Fracture that the community show should come and film. Please. <laughs> I've tried so many different directions. So I should stop begging and get on with it. Cain and Abel. I was a big fan of Poorly Animated Series 1. It was hilarious to me. And for some reason, without asking, he put me as a person, not my voice, just as the director in Poorly Animated Series 2. Out of the blue, he sent me an early preview link and he was like, check this out. And I said, yes, obviously. And I watched it and, it, it, and then suddenly there's me. There's me as the director with his voice. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I obviously asked him about it and he said that he put in different uh, Hootubers uh, that he liked just throughout the video. Wicked! It was so good. Ah, oh, thank you to Kane for that. It, again, it's all, all about them warm fuzzies. All about them warm, warm, warm fuzzies. Yum, yum, yum. Your oddball style of comedy is hilarious, by the way. Although, it can get a bit too crude, Mr. Kane. Naughty. What would Rory the Dalek say? <laughs> Back to people I've had as an interview guest. Richard, aka Cleverdick Films. Again, he was one I was a fan of ever since the William Hartnell review. And asking him and him saying yes to come on the community show was awesome. I think he still holds the record for the longest interview. I think so. He is a self-proclaimed tangenter, if you like. But that's excellent. That worked for me. It, it, I mean, it, the editing took longer. But as an interview, it just made it all the more fun and interesting. Like, I believe there was a World War II fact in there. I'm not spoiling it. It was very interesting. You'll have to check out the full interview for that one. It was fascinating to talk to you. And I'm still eagerly awaiting the Matt Smith retrospective review. 
Let me be in it, please. I'm on my knees. I want to be everywhere. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll count my blessings. Next is the Who store. Ah, oh, this isn't really a community show thing, but dude, visiting the Who store. If you have not visited the Who store in London, do it. They've got a museum in the back with actual like screen used costumes and props and stuff. And the amount of Who merch on display, dude, Forbidden Planet? Get out of here! The things I wanted to buy. There's one item in there that I was looking for for ages. I've been looking for this for years. It's the TARDIS. It's about, I don't know, yay big. And it's got a rotary phone inside. It's so cool. And I've wanted one for years. And it was in there. But it was like 150 quid. So I bought a, I bought my celery lapel pin instead. Which was still like, I don't know, 20, 40 quid? I forget which one. It's very expensive. But also, the, oh my god, the people that work in there, the, both the owners and uh, the guy on the front desk, but all three of them were amazing to talk to. The stories they have, unbeatable when it comes to stories, that's what I have to say, quite frankly, and I'm, I'm putting my foot down on that. They have the best, cool Doctor Who nerdy stories out of anyone. Foot down, slipper down, threatening. And finally, there are two big shout-outs to go, because... Well, firstly, there are all the people that featured in the character options skit. Matt Barrett, Joe Eddings, Luke Lane, Gemma Whittington. You were in that one, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. Russell on Productions, Alia E. Torrey, Marcus Cotton, and Taya Van Dyke. Thank you, you all were very kind to get me those lines in a very short amount of time. Yeah, next year, Series 2 of The Community Show. Not going to be every two weeks. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's going to be once a month. So... You have to wait. But that wraps up the show and let me move over here for this bit. This is indeed the last community show episode of the year and of this series. It's been a weird sort of six months. <laughs> I've been able to do some incredible things like I've mentioned throughout this video. Go around in DW 2012's TARDIS, be inside two Daleks. <laughs> Meet some amazing people, whether it be in person or over Zoom. Host a Comic-Con panel. What? And it's all because of this show and the support you have shown, which has helped me continue the show. I hope to continue to entertain and promote in 2022. Just, yeah. A general thank you to everyone watching. Everyone who has been watching. Whether you watched one episode, or you've watched them all, or if you bought merch, big thank you to those who bought the merch. That was awesome. Hey, after 11 years, I finally turned a profit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I will see you in 2022. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! <laughs> it's weird to film that bit in November. Yeah.